what shall I do? What step should I take? What move should I make? Oh Lord, what shall I do? Join me for the next few minutes as we reflect on God's words and leverage the power of prayer. Ellen White vividly states in her book, The Call to Stand Apart, that we are living in the most solemn period of this world's history. And that is why we need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We need to be guided by the Word of God. You see, as Christians, we all have various roles in the church. You might not be able to preach a power-packed sermon. You may not be able to sing the wondrous love of Jesus. But God has instilled in us a gift that's supposed to be used for his ministry. And if you're like me, and you have been in the church for a while now, you probably have gotten the gist of your ministry. For me, I believe that the Lord has given me the gift of speech to encourage and inspire people. But what do you think would happen if I stopped digging in the Word of God? What would happen if I refused to listen to the Holy Spirit and be guided by the Word of God? Oh, how my gift would be wasted. Brethren, I say this to explain that we cannot afford to be caught up in ourselves. You see, the moment we stop asking God what He desires us to do, the moment where we start to drift away from our calling. Now, Micah 6 verse 8 explains it perfectly. It says, He hath shewed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Ellen White says, every follower of christ should earnestly inquire lord what will thou have me to do what need to humble ourselves before the lord and fasting and with fasting and prayer and meditate upon his word especially upon the scenes of judgment especially upon the scenes of judgment you see we don't even realize the magnitude the impact that we have on other people we might think that refusing to take the guidance from the word is a small thing, but our future, our well-being, and the salvation of other people is depending on it. Let us ask God to take away that spirit of pride and replace it with a heart that is willing to take heed. We need to wake up and sense the urgency of the moment. Now is not the time to be asleep. So now we're going to enter into a little attitude of prayer. We're going to pray for a few things. We're going to pray that we will remain focused during this pandemic and that we will be willing to be guided by the word of God. Number two, we're going to pray for our new believers in the church that they will be able to develop a lasting relationship with Jesus that will only grow beautifully with time. Number three, that we will use the extra time we have at home to deeply study God's words. And lastly, we're going to pray for those who are struggling to pay their bills and keep food on their table due to the pandemic. Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for inspiring us and blessing us with certain gifts, Lord, and we understand that we have a duty to actually fulfill our purpose on this earth father we ask that we will not look left or right or be confused or distracted by the things of this world but we will remain focused in you in your name we do pray amen thank you so much for tuning in you know what to do like share and subscribe and follow us on our social media pages at sure to the sda church later